My name is Amy Rosenthal, Clinical Practice Manager with the Division of Community Living at the Ohio Department of Aging. This training will cover clinical aspects of the memory care service that was implemented earlier this year. This is a pre-recorded training intended for assisted living case management staff at the PAA level. The agenda for this training includes the following topics. First, a definition of the memory care service. Then we'll review dementia diagnoses that qualify for the memory care service. Next, we'll go over the memory care authorization process. Next will be a definition of resident units and some exceptions related to that definition. Next, we're going to talk about some documentation examples related to memory care, specifically activity preferences and outdoor space. Next, we'll talk about the similarities and differences between home and community based settings and memory care service. And we'll conclude this training with a list of best practices as they relate to uh, quarterly visits, things to look for, um, ways to document, etc. The memory care service is included in the requirements for the assisted living service, which can be found in the Ohio Administrative Code 173-39-02.16. Memory care is a service that a provider provides to an individual with a documented diagnosis of any form of dementia. Memory care providers, those that are certified to provide memory care, must comply with all basic assisted living requirements along with memory care requirements. As mentioned earlier, an individual must have a qualifying dementia diagnosis in order to receive memory care service. A qualifying dementia diagnosis would be one of the following, Alzheimer's disease, vascular dementia, frontal temporal dementia, Lewy body dementia, mixed other dementia. When we talk about mixed dementia, we're talking about, about two different kinds of dementia. It could be a combination of Alzheimer's disease and vascular dementia. It could be a combination of Lewy body and vascular dementia. Um, and when we talk about other dementia, we're talking about things such as diseases such as Parkinson's disease, Huntings, Huntington's disease, kurtzfeldt jacob disease, or Korsakoff syndrome. Now let's talk about how the memory care service is authorized. As a case manager, you will want to confirm that the individual has a documented diagnosis of any form of dementia. This will be located in the medical information received from Medicaid from the PCP, or it will be on the assessment window in the medical information section under diagnoses in PIMS. As a case manager, you should then contact the individual and or their caregiver to ask if they would like to receive memory care services as part of their person-centered service plan. Next, you'll want to contact the assisted living facility to ensure that the facility can meet the individual's needs. You may also want to work with your provider oversight team as they can tell you where the service is being delivered in the setting. For example, some providers are only providing memory care services within secured wings of the setting. Make sure you aren't authorizing the memory care service for an individual if the individual isn't living in the area of the setting where the provider agreed to deliver the service. If the provider is unable to provide memory care services to the specific individual or the individual is not interested in memory care services, the case manager will then authorize basic assisted living services. If the provider is able to provide memory, memory care and the individual agrees to receive memory care, you will then authorize the memory care service on the person-centered service plan. ODA 
ODA's website now has a new section under news and events called provider memos. This section provides guidance uh, for the providers that we've also shared with you. It's a central location um, that communicates information regarding rules, notices, um, just to ensure that everybody's on the same page and all of the information is centrally located. In order for an assisted living facility to provide memory care service, they must provide the following. They must have a purpose statement on their website indicating that they provide memory care service. They must provide single occupancy resident units. And this is where the service is being provided within the setting. This is up to the provider to decide where it is to be delivered. Some providers are providing the service in locked units, some are not. Another requirement is that the providers provide access to at least three therapeutic, social, or recreational activities a day. They must also provide safe access to outdoor spaces, and they must provide assistance in less than 10 minutes from the time of the activation of a call light system. Call light system. As discussed on the previous slide, resident units are single occupancy units. There are some exceptions, however. If the individual requests to share their unit with someone else, for example, they have a friend that they want to share with. Another exception would be if the individual shares their unit with a person with whom they have an existing relationship, such as their spouse, parent, or sibling. Individuals' preferences should be followed when creating or revising the person-centered service plan. The individual's preferences and activities and how they like to spend time outside should be documented in the person-centered service plan as a way of communicating with the staff at the facility. Uh, it also allows the individual to have control over um, their activities and how they wish to spend their time. So as you're creating or revising the PCSP, talk to the individuals about what activities they enjoy, try to list, list some of those activities in the PCSP so that uh, other staff is aware and can assist the individual in meeting their needs. Um, as far as outdoor space, talk to the individual about what time of day they like to be outside, how much time they like to spend outside, and what kind of assistance they need from staff in order to be outside. Now we will look at an example for activity preferences and a way to document it into the person-centered service plan. Implication. Jane is receiving memory care services on a secured unit and has the right to autonomy and independence in making life choices, including but not limited to daily activities. Jane enjoys activities like drawing, listening to music, watching TV, and gardening. Goal. Jane will have the opportunity to participate in activities of her choosing. Intervention. Facility staff will ask Jane if she wants to participate in activities. Staff will consider Jane's preferences for activities when creating the activity calendar. This example reflects Jane's activity preferences and clearly communicates these preferences to AL staff. Staff may even be able to integrate activities that Jane likes into the monthly activity calendar if appropriate so that other people can also enjoy activities of this sort. Now we're going to talk about the similarities and differences between the home and community-based settings requirements and the memory care requirements. The home and community-based settings requirements are found in OAC 5160-44-01. This rule states that the setting ensures an individual's rights of privacy, dignity, and respect, and freedom from coercion and restraint. The memory care service requires providers to provide access to at least three recreational activities per day, 
safe access to outdoor space and to help in fewer than 10 minutes after initiating a call through the resident call system. Both of these rules and requirements focus on quality of care. However, the home and community based settings requirements can be modified or changed depending on the individual's situation. For example, the individual can decide who they wish to have access to their unit. Uh, they can decide who has a key or who doesn't have a key. Um, they also can decide whether or how they want to access the community, uh, whether it be work or volunteer activities um, or just uh, recreational activities within the community setting. The addition of the memory care service does not change the process for home and community based settings requirements or person centered service plan documentation. Continue to document any modifications identified during your quarterly and annual visits or on an as needed basis. Use the memory care service as a guide to reflect preferences regarding activities and outdoor access in the person centered service plan. Now let's take a look at an example of a person centered service plan for an individual not only receiving memory care, but also requiring an HCBS modification. As you see by the example, we have clearly indicated in bold that this is an HCBS modification. This, by making it clear in bold, we provide clear communication to facility staff as to what the needs of this individual are as far as um, providing safe access. So implications. Jane is receiving memory care services on a secured unit and has the right to safe access to outdoor space. Jane's history of wandering due to dementia makes it unsafe for her to go outside alone. Jane prefers to go outside once a day before lunch. We have noted this as a modification because this is actually limiting um, Jane's right to physically access the setting. And we want um, staff to be aware that this is a limitation and that um, the individual does need help and does have um, this documented um, in her person-centered service plan. So the goal is for that Jane will safely access outdoor space while living in the assisted living. She will go outside daily with assistance before lunch. The intervention facility staff will ask Jane if she wants to go outside daily and before lunch. Staff will accompany Jane outside. Staff will support Jane in going outside if she expresses a desire at any time. So this example indicates that uh, Jane's preferences are being considered as far as time of day and how much time she wants to spend outside. It also um, indicates her level of need for assistance um, with clear communication to the staff as to how they can best support her. We're going to conclude this training by talking about best practices case managers can use during quarterly visits with their memory care individuals. During your quarterly visits, you should review the memory care services, specifically call light response, outdoor space, and activity preferences. You should review such things as um, if the resident is receiving assistance within 10 minutes or less when they activate their call light. Do their family members have any concerns about this? You should cover things about outdoor space. Is the resident getting to go outside as identified in their person-centered service plan? Does the family confirm this? Also talk about activities. Is the resident going to activities? If not, why not? Does the, do the activities align with their preferences or their, and or their stage of dementia? We have included some state and federal resources that you can refer to for additional information related to assisted living service, memory care service, 
and home and community-based settings rules. If you have any questions about this training or any other questions related to the memory care service, please con contact your clinical management staff with these questions. This concludes the Ohio Department of Aging's training. Thank you for your time.